What's up guys? For today's video I'm going to be doing a snow plowing class on how to properly plow and handle driveways that have either curbs or Belgian block. Now throughout the course of your snow plowing career you will get a client, at least one or two clients, that either have a curb or Belgian block and knowing how to properly plow uh, those types of driveways is going to be crucial because if you don't understand how to properly plow curbs or Belgian block, you're going to A, cause damage, and B, cost you money, and you may even damage your truck and plow too. So, yeah, uh, when it comes to curbs and Belgian block, yes, I've said that probably about three or four times. I'm going to say that quite a few more times. Uh, you're faced with a, quite a few more challenges than you would on a standard flat driveway with, with no edges on either side. Uh, to start with, when it snows and you come to plow off the snow off the driveway, the snow has to come overcome an additional obstacle, you know, when you angle your plow and try and throw it off the side of your driveway. It has to go up and over the curb or Belgian block, and in my experience, the snow really struggles to do that. It's not like a flat driveway where, you know, when you push it off, it's on an equal plane and you can just, you know, it just gets flung off to the side. Um, what ends up happening is the snow will actually somewhat come back into the driveway you know because it creates a small mound to start with and then it wants to fall back in uh, and therefore reduces the size of the driveway so it's really important that you get as close as you can to the curb or the belgian block um, additionally without damaging it when it comes to curbs and belgian block you need to plow slowly as where with a flat driveway you know you can build up some speed under the right circumstances and when you build up speed uh, and that snow catches the mold board of the plow that snow will generally get thrown further away but you know as I mentioned when it comes to uh, curbs and berms and Belgian block uh, you really have to go slow because if you do make contact with those obstacles uh, you want it to be very gentle if you're coming at it with you know some steam then as I mentioned earlier you know you can cause some damage now I've covered a couple things in this video already and there's many things that I want to cover and, and they're just going to kind of come out as I think of them so this video may be slightly disorganized so the topic I want to focus on now is what do you do when you have a horseshoe driveway which I've covered some of these points in a past video but this video is specifically about Belgian block and curb so I'm going to reiterate some of the points again. So when you have a horseshoe like this and you have a curb or Belgian block this becomes very tricky in my opinion and in my experience never push the snow on the inside of that turn the reason you don't want to do it if you see my back tire my back tire is a couple inches away from that curb and if you look at the front my plows maybe three or four feet off from the curb so if you push snow on the right side a couple things are going to happen one your back tire is going to run over it it's going to compact that in and you're going to build up hard pack which likely will eventually turn to ice so that's not what you want additionally in certain circumstances you may have to put your rear tire up on the curb which i don't recommend doing it but i have done it in the past and what happens when you put your rear tire up on the curb it allows your truck to get closer to that inside of that horseshoe and therefore you can get that plow closer to the inside and you can get more of that snow out of there so uh, another technique that you can use is you can pull forward get your back tire as close as you can to that curb get what you can and then back up and turn your wheels the opposite way and kind of come at it on a different angle that way you can try and get your plow in there and you know get more of that snow out of there which that is time consuming and normally when it comes to snow plowing the name of our game is speed efficiency but you don't want to cause damage you know everybody wants their driveway plowed now 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 but at the same time you know you got to take it slow and you got to do what you got to do here's another point that I'd like to make when it comes to snow plow markers I love to have snow plow markers on the outside of horseshoes when it comes to curbs and or actually when it comes to any type of horseshoe driveway. When it comes to snow plow markers, I always like to put plenty of them on the outside. I put very few, if any, on the inside. And the reason being is oftentimes, or well, from time to time, your rear tire may hop up on that curb. It, it may happen, you know, there may be so much snow that you can't really see what you're doing. And what happens when you put plow markers there, 
those plow markers will scrape the side of your truck. Uh, that's something to think about there. Another option which I have recommended in the past is you could take some orange ribbon and if you have a tree or something hanging, you can take that orange ribbon and kind of droop it around uh, perpendicular or vertically to where the curb is. That way you have a pretty good idea of where it is. Okay, now we're gonna start getting into some advanced techniques. So in curbs in Belgian block, you're not always gonna have a spot where you can just push the snow and you know not have to worry about it. Oftentimes you're gonna have to carry some snow and you're eventually gonna have to push it up over the curb or Belgian block. So I'm gonna show you the proper technique on how to do that task. So when you're trying to push snow up over the curb, it's gonna happen in one of two ways. The first way is the most ideal. See, I'm coming forward nice and easy. I know where the curb is. Raise my plow up before the curb, drop it back down, raise it up a little bit. That way I get as much snow forward as possible and then I lift up the plow to push it forward, pile it up and make room for more snow later on in the season. Now this is another way that it may happen. You try to avoid this way, but see I'm coming forward nice and easy and I'm gonna make contact with curb. I try to lift the plow up, it won't lift up. So I put the truck in neutral, it backs up a little bit. Then I raise my plow up again and then I just push that snow forward. All right, so now I'm gonna start teaching an advanced technique, which is eventually gonna work itself into a more advanced version of that technique. So. As I mentioned earlier in this video, when it comes to driveways with Belgian blocker curbs, it's imperative, it's important that you get as close to the edge as possible because as I mentioned earlier, snow has a habit of falling back into the driveway which makes it appear that the driveway is smaller than that of which it really is. So it's important that you get close to that edge. But here's the thing, you really don't wanna make contact with the edge. So how do we not make contact with the edge? Well, here's a couple pointers. One go slow take your time if you do make contact with the edge be ready to jerk that steering wheel right back to the right or the left whatever it takes to get off that curb but try and stay close uh, utilize driveway markers when you can especially on the outside you know the inside of uh, horseshoe turns you know try and limit the amount of plow markers because I mentioned earlier it may scratch the paint also you can use ribbon but here's a really cool technique which I've learned, which it may be difficult for uh, some of you out there that you know, may have limited mobility, but if you are able to utilize this technique, I feel like it may be very helpful. So what I do for this technique, roll my window down, because I don't have automatic windows. Then I literally stick my head out the window. This gives me the best view of the corner of that snow plow. And from here, I can really see how close my plow is to the curb and how close I can get. With this technique, I can literally get within inches of that curb. So the old stick your head out the window technique is very effective at getting really close to that curb. So as I had mentioned earlier, this is the outside edge of a horseshoe driveway and oftentimes you'll find that there's a walkway leading to the house and whenever you push the snow to the outside, obviously you're going to have a big pile of snow. If you do offer shoveling services, you really want to limit the amount of snow that you put in front of the walkway because ultimately you're just making more work for yourself in the long run. So the question becomes, how do you prevent getting a big amount of snow there well you really can not but here's a trick that you can use to help save your back and reduce the amount of work that you have to perform at the residence you're plowing so here's the technique what you're gonna do you're gonna angle your plow and you're literally gonna sneak it in there drop it down drop your plow to the, uh, the, the sidewalk and you're gonna lift it back up a little bit so the plow isn't really scraping all the way down you're gonna push forward and it's great to have markers right there, that way you mark the edge of the curb of the Belgian block so you don't damage them. Um, and then you just push that snow forward and really that's gonna save you a lot of work when done properly. And it's important that you use your head here. Of course, 
you want to do a walk around the driveway before the season and you want to look at the obstacles you have. For me, I just have a concrete walkway here and I'm not really concerned too much about damaging things. However, if it was a stamped concrete or if you have pavers, especially if the pavers are sticking up or sticking down, uh, using that technique you might not want to do it or if you do use it you really want to bring your plow up and just get the big bulk out of the walkway because you can ultimately cause more damage than the good you're doing by using this technique so again you want to use your head so now you're gonna see me do the technique as I would and here we go So this technique may not look like much on camera, but you know what, if you get a foot of snow and then you get an inch of rain on top and then it's that really heavy wet snow, I mean that technique alone right there, that may have saved you 15 minutes of shoveling, may save your back, and ultimately it's going to allow you to stay more refreshed and have more energy and therefore you'll be able to stay more focused at what you're doing. So try not to hit the curb, try not to hit the Belgian block, but in a real world situation, you know, you, you're going to tap it every now and then. Just try not to do it. Try not to do it. Uh, yeah, I think Belgian block is a bit harder than concrete, so I think you're a little bit safer at not causing as much damage with Belgian block. But on the flip side, uh, Belgian block is mortar together, so I think it's more likely that you'll dislodge it. Uh, yeah. Don't cause damage. It's a good idea, as I mentioned earlier in this video, go over the driveway with the homeowner preseason. If you feel like you know, you're getting a bad vibe from the homeowner, or if you just want to protect yourself, take some pictures, take a quick video of the driveway. That way you can uh, identify that, you know, if there is any damage before the season or if there's not any damage, you know. That way you have some evidence to protect yourself if it ever comes down to a court case, which hopefully it never comes down to that, and I'm tired of talking and ranting. Hopefully you guys found these tips, tricks, and techniques helpful. If you did, really appreciate a thumbs up. Hey, also, if you do something differently than I do, if you have a better way of plowing driveways like this in Belgian block, please leave a comment in the comments section below. I'm always looking to learn myself as well as everybody out there. I think that's one of the great things about YouTube. It's, it can really be a learning community. So any other comments you have, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Also, if you're not subscribed, my channel is growing. I'd like to thank everybody for that. Um, if you're new to the channel as well, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And also, I think I'm going to be doing some giveaways shortly in the future here. So that's it. Thanks for watching.